Good day, everybody. My name is Austin Pullman. I am the lead neuroexercise specialist for our Deerfield location of Movement Revolution. If you guys are ever in the Chicagoland area, give us a view, come and check us out. Um, today, we are going to be going over hip stability and ways to use our hips in standing and kneeling positions. These are going to help with walking. So our end goal today is to increase your stability in your hips while you're walking through exercises kneeling and through exercises standing. All right, so what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna get started with a little bit of a warm up. All right, we're gonna start with jumping jacks, a modified version. So we're gonna raise our arms up, step out to the side and step in. I like to start with one warm up exercise just to get things started. Even though we're gonna be focused on hips, it's good to get our whole body moving right in the beginning. So let's go ahead and do these for about one minute together. Trying to step out, put your weight into the leg that you're stepping out to, bringing your arms all the way over your head. So we're going to increase our stability through these exercises, kneeling and standing. And if you guys want to build upon the videos that we've created here at Movement Revolution, go check out Daisy's video. She worked on trunk mobility. So before doing my exercise plan, it would be great for you guys to warm up your trunk. Loosen it up and get a good trunk exercise in, and then come do my video. All right. We are going to get started here in the kneeling position, okay? So I'm going to be kneeling. It would be good if you guys had some type of mat um, or some type of chair next to you as well. This way, if we get into any compromised position, we'll always have a point of safety to be able to stand up, okay? So we're going to go down to the kneeling position. You guys can do this however you'd like. I like to put my weight on my front leg, step my back leg back, drop down to one knee, and then go down into the kneeling position. All right, now down here, what we're going to work on is activating our hips or our glutes and then utilizing them, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to squeeze into our glutes by driving your hips as far forward as you can. We don't want to overextend but we wanna go right in line with our chest and our knees, okay? And then you're gonna let go, all right? And then we're gonna squeeze, three, two, one, and let go, and squeeze, and let go. This is three, squeeze, four, squeeze, five. And if you guys are struggling with this, Put your hands on a table or on a chair and squeeze into those glutes, okay? We're gonna try to use the, no chair on this one, but if you need the chair, that is totally okay. So you're gonna squeeze, squeeze and hold. Three, two, one, that's seven. Squeeze, we're going to 10. Squeeze and hold. Three, two, one, nine. Last one, squeeze and hold, nine, ten. good job. All right, so now what we're gonna be working on is driving up one knee. So we need hip stability to create enough balance in our body to bring up the other leg. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna squeeze into those glutes. We're gonna shift one way, and I'll give you guys the front view of this. We're gonna squeeze the uh, glutes, shift one way, drive up the knee, okay? Now we're in a half kneeling position. You guys see how I use my arms there to assist that leg coming up. So make sure you guys are incorporating an arm swing. So shift the other way, glute squeeze, and drive up the knee, okay? And we're gonna alternate on this going to 20, all right? So ready, begin. Shift, glute squeeze, drive the knee up. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Keep those glutes squeezing. Fourteen, that's creating your stability in your body. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. And 20, excellent job, you guys. If you guys 
need a sip of water here, go ahead and take a sip of water. I'll give you guys a little bit of time to do that. Um, the next one that we're going to do is a kneeling power up, okay? So it's similar to our first one where we're gonna utilize our glutes and finish in this upright position. But first we're gonna drive our hips all the way back and power them up, okay? Well, the last thing we're gonna add in is driving our hips back and powering our arms up as big as we can, all right? So we're gonna drive back and up. One, drive back and up. Two, three, we're gonna go to 10 on this. Four, five, six, seven. You guys can do whatever you'd like with your hands, wherever that feels the most comfortable. Eight, nine, last one for 10. Very, very good. So. I like to take a stop here and show you guys why I'm having you drive your hips forward and what that translates to in a walking pattern. So you guys can stay down on the ground. I'm just gonna go ahead and step up here, okay? So if I'm walking and I'm leaving my hips behind, I'm gonna have a forward standing position, okay? We wanna drive those glutes up. We wanna power through our powerhouse of our body, okay? Which is our glutes. So you can translate that down to on your knees, driving your hips forward, and putting the pieces together to feel that similar position while you're in a standing position, okay? Now we're gonna go ahead and move on, and we're gonna actually do the, one of the exercises that we started with today, the glute squeeze, and we're gonna drive into the chair as far as we can, okay? Now we don't wanna overextend into our hips, so be careful not to arch your back. So we're gonna drive back our hips a little bit, and extend them forward. Very similar to the two exercises we've done already. So drive back and drive in. Hold three, two, one. That's one. Drive back and in, hold three, two, one. So the reasoning behind bringing a chair in is we get to create leverage with our, in, within our body. And this creates intramuscular pressure, which increases our stability through a muscle. So we're gonna drive back, squeeze forward, three, two, one, that's four, squeeze forward, three, two, one, that's five, squeeze and hold, six, drive them back, drive it up, three, two, one, seven, drive it back, drive it up, three, two, one, eight, we got two more, everybody, three, two, one, Last one for 10, three, two, one. Great job, you guys, great job. All right, so now we need to build strength within our glutes to do what I'm asking you guys to do, right? To be able to drive those hips up, we might need to build some strength in the glutes. So I'm gonna show you guys two exercises to start strengthening your glutes. And if you find the beginning of this video hard, complete these exercises until you're able to do the beginning of this exercise plan, okay? So we're gonna put our hands down. We're gonna be in a quadruped position. So we're gonna be on our hands and our knees. We're gonna think about shifting our weight and our glute one way and kicking a leg straight back. So I'm not worried so much about the ki leg kicking back as much as I'm worried about this glute squeezing and contracting fully. So you'll notice if I kick my leg back like that, I'm in that position of glutes forward, okay? so. Right here, you're gonna kick back for one, two, three, four, five, going to 10, halfway there, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Good job, you guys. Okay, so now we're gonna switch to the other side. One, two, three, four. Trying to keep your hips square down to the ground. Five, six, keep it up everybody. Seven, eight, trying to keep your core nice and tight. Nine, and back 10. All right, so I inc incorporated another piece of things that we didn't talk about today. We're gonna to talk about our core in relation to our hips. So 
Once I drive those hips forward, I need to bring my core in nice and tight. So to do that, I'm gonna think about my belly button getting as close as I can to my spinal muscles, okay? So we're gonna pull our tummy in, belly button as close as we can to our spinal cord, and we're gonna continue to do these exercises, okay? So core tight, we're gonna do what's called a fire hydrant. It is exactly what it sounds like. We're gonna act like a dog down here, okay? We're gonna do 10 where you open up that knee, drive it out to the side and open up that hips. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. Keep it up, you guys. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Very good. I'm going to give you a front view for my right leg here. So, glutes squeezed, core tight. Drive that knee out to the side, okay? Drive that knee out to the side. Ready? Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Excellent job, you guys. Okay, now we're gonna drive into our hips, power up like we did today. You're gonna shift one way, drive up a leg, okay? And that gets us into a standing posi or, uh, position before we stand up. If you guys need your chair close by, go ahead and put that right next to you, and you're gonna drive up to your feet. Okay, excellent job, you guys. So now we are on our feet. All right, now we're gonna translate all of this over to walking, okay? So what we're gonna do is called a standing hip hinge. And it's very similar to pushing your glutes back and using them just like we did on the ground to help you feel and activate them in a standing position. All right, so what we are going to do is drive our hips back. What I like to think about is our pelvis right here is gonna tip slightly forward. So if I push my glutes back and keep my legs pretty straight, I'm going to create a response in the back of my legs and my glutes, and then I'm gonna squeeze from them and drive up. All right, so we're gonna drive back in our glutes and up for one, standing power up, and two for a hip hinge. Three, keeping your back and your core straight and tight, Four, can help to take away any low back pain that you might be feeling. Five, so if we start walking with our glutes underneath our chest and extending forward, we're gonna find that we take some pressure off of different parts of our back or different compensating muscles, okay? Nine and 10, all right? Now let's just walk a couple walking patterns, working on driving our hips forward like we just practiced and taking a few steps, okay? So what that does for us is keeps us in an upright position, core tight, versus that forward position where we aren't activating our glutes, putting that tension in our back, okay? We wanna make sure that we're activating those hips using the strength video or the strength exercises that I showed you today and the activation exercises that I showed you today. Thank you for joining my video and I look forward to seeing you guys in person at some point. Have a great day, bye-bye.